Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. Well, Bill Ackman believes that the federal funds rate is going to remain very high in the US for quite some time. His thought process is that not only will the Fed have to rate hike incredibly fast, as we're seeing December showing a 3.4 to even 3.6% rating, but then it will need to moderate and stay very high for some time. On the other side, the market believes that will be rate hikes and then rate cuts later on in 2023, three to be exact. And we have the charts to really be talking about this today. But more importantly than that, the market has rallied through a key zone that we all know is what we call the defended area. On the markets, we've been talking about this now for a few weeks. And while it came through and underneath early, by the end of the day, it had rallied back up. So does this show the bulls are back in this market and they're ready to push it up for a bit of a squeeze? Well, time's gonna tell, but let's take a look at some of the best areas right now in these markets across the board. See you soon, guys. This is gonna be a good one. Well, welcome back everybody to The Daily Show where we talk about stocks, commodities, and cryptos. To begin with, let's talk about Bank of America. Yes, another large bank has come out and they've slashed their forecast for the S&P 500 once again. At the beginning of the year, we were sitting at all highs, 4,800, 5,000. Now, unfortunately, Bank of America have pushed it down. And where have they gone? All the way back down to 3,600. I always ask this when we get one of these reports. Let's see what everybody else in the community thinks that the markets are going to be at by the end of the year. Give us your idea for 2022 at the end of the year, what level is it going to be at? Now, Bank of America believes that there's an expectation the Federal Reserve will pivot in 2023. This seems to be the common concept right now in the markets. On top of that, for anyone trading the Friday session, we have $1.9 trillion of options expiration. And this is a pretty crucial moment for a lot of stock hedges. Basically, it's a lot on the line and will it go down or is it going to just continue to ramp here? Because there are so many people that have positions in the negative side and the markets often tend to do the opposite to that. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Target rate probabilities. So I think everyone's in agreement on one thing on the street, whether it's Ackman or anybody else, rates are going up at an incredibly fast rate. Check this out, one day ago, before we saw those CPI numbers, and even one week ago, 0% of economists thought that we would get 100 basis points. Then all of a sudden, it went to 7.6, and then all of a sudden, 83.3% of people thought that we were going to get 100 basis points hike on the next big one from the Fed. Well, it just shows you how fast things change. It's a click of a button, and basically all of a sudden, people really change their opinions in markets right now. And you can see how that's correlated here on the future yields into the future. One of the members of our community made this chart, thank you very much. And basically what it shows us is it shows us that there's a huge spiking all the way through here for the end of the year. We get into 2000 and kind of 23, we spike up to somewhere around 3.6%, maybe even higher on yields, and then we start to cut into 2024. Now this is the general expectation of the market, but this is where Ackman comes in because he really has a slightly different opinion on this and it's based on history and look, we all agree that history is incredibly important to look at. If we think about the 1970s and 1980s, basically what happened during that time is we saw three recessions. We saw many recessions because every single time they tried to combat inflation, they would then cut the rate and inflation would come back. It was a big problem. Now to beat inflation out, they had to remain at an incredibly high number. And in fact, 100% of the time, inflation has never been beaten in the US without, once it's been past 5.5% core inflation, without pushing interest rates above the inflation number. Now, I don't think that's going to happen this time, and I don't even think Ackman thinks it's gonna happen this time, because you'll notice in his tweets here, he said, is 3.7% federal funds rate going to be enough to subdue 9.1% CPI? Time will tell whether peak federal funds rate will need to go above 4% plus for an extended period. So what he's really saying more is the extended period is the worry here for the economy. I think most people, even Ackman himself, thinks that the recession is basically pinned into the US market right now. The Fed have come out with statements before saying they cannot 
not combat inflation. They have to go at it and they will not stop. It doesn't matter where jobs start to decline and we see people getting fired. The Fed have a job to do here and that job is to basically fix a mess they created in the first place with the knee-jerk reactions. Great commentary from Ackman here and I think it's very valid. What do you guys think though? Do you think that's what's going to have to happen? We sit at a really high rate, let's say 3.6, even 4% for an extended period and the market's got it wrong. This is why it's an ever-evolving situation and picking the bottom here in markets is going to be difficult. Be fast, be nimble and I think day traders will continue to be very, very, I guess you would say, happy with the markets over the next year because the way it's going to be is a lot of volatility and a lot of swings each way. Consumer price index currently has peaked at potentially this 9.1%. Now, future Ford models have it dropping off. We'll find out whether future Ford models are correct, but this is what a lot of people expect. And in terms of market outlooks, a lot of people have these types of valuations. So as you can see here, this is a S&P 500 target evaluation. And while they say 3,622, take a look here at the most important one here, the fundamental valuation, 3,247. Every single Wall Street pundit that I've seen that's put out these reports, whether it's Goldman Sachs or anyone else, they all seem to come in around 3,150, 3,200, 3,300. Very interesting because a lot of the general public seems to be of the opinion that this is not the low or this is not the level. It's more like here or 3,500 or even some people are now saying 2,200. It's interesting to see that almost all of the street have that number in the core numbers once you take it out. So they show 3,600, but really I think a lot of them are looking for this and you can see the weighting here of the forecast. Interesting stuff there from this report. Now, other things that are important to note right now, and this is probably the biggest problem, though I don't think it will spill over just yet. I have a feeling that it's going to hold itself up, is the China property market. Now, I've talked a lot about on this channel when you get property and when it falls and what that means for the economies around the world. If a crash is led by land, we have to watch out. At this stage, the worst market in terms of land and cost and everything like that has got to be China. And you can see here with the property high yield bonds getting kind of wrecked, this is not necessarily a great sign for the world economy. Hopefully it holds for now and I do think it will. In terms of S&P 500 recessions, what's the average been? Just so everybody knows, usually around 32% down top to bottom. When does that happen? Could be later on this year, could be next year. But if you're looking at averages, that's where we tend to go. And leading into this Friday, remember it usually statistically has been a bearish day, but more importantly, we have retail sales coming out and the big options expiration. The week after, what do we have? All of the bigger earnings start. We've already seen some banks miss so far. Will more banks miss in the next week? We'll certainly need to be taking a look at it. Speaking of earnings, what a great time for us to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Tiger Brokers. Tiger Brokers have an amazing platform with so many great features, but one of those features is the earnings calendar, which you can set for day, week, month, whether you want IPOs, dividends, or just to report announcements. They show them all here for the multitude of markets that they offer. The great thing about it is that you can then see it so quickly and clearly. And as traders, we get bombarded with information. So the best thing to do is to have a platform that allows us to see it quickly. Many of you guys know that I also love being able to go over and have a look at the sectors and heat maps inside of markets. And I really like to be able to see this on the day. So when you load these types of things up, you can go over a 10 day and see all of the sectors. Another great feature that Tiger Brokers has. If you're from Australia as well and you're interested in using Tiger Brokers, remember they have a $0 FX fee per trade and also there's only a 37 basis points per transaction to convert from Australian dollars into USD and backwards. This is so much lower than the other brokers that we have here on the screen. So if you're interested in Tiger Brokers and you want to support the channel, click on the link in the description down below and open an account today. So let's get into some of these charts here and we'll begin with copper. What's going on with copper? Well, it's degrading. It really shows us that the Federal Reserve is continuing to put a lot of pressure on demand throughout the US economy and other economies around the world. And that is putting downside pressure on the metals here. 
Basically, we call it Dr. Copper. It's a bit sick right now. And it just shows that eventually, at least from this perspective, if they can combat inflation, it will be most likely that the Federal Reserve would push rates down in 2023. The pivot expected is 2023, about mid-year. And then from that point, possibly two to three rate cuts. Let's move over to the US dollar. Now, this is what you're all looking for, traders out there, if you want the US market to go up right now. You want the US dollar to decrease. If it decreases, then things are looking a lot better. Let's go and have a look at what we've got going on here on the one hour chart. You'll notice that currently we moved up and went high and then the market switched during the day. Conversely, what happened? The US dollar actually came down. So effectively, if the US dollar continues to come down, expect the stock market to potentially have a bit of a raise, maybe a bit of a bull kind of movement. If the US dollar goes up again, I still th I think we might be making a new low here on the S&P 500 into Friday or even the Monday session. So this is the one to watch. Where you want it to now close below is going to be 107.50. This is where the CPI core inflation number came out. It reversed, grabbed some orders and then moved up. There's probably going to be a little bit of an order block sitting behind this kind of level. And this may be a zone that kind of gives you a little bit more confidence that the market is going to rally, that is the stock market. So if we fall under that level, could be good for these markets. In terms of yields, here's the US 10 year. You can see it's dropping a little bit here, the sickness in the economy. We've got the level where if yields are going to drop, they'll need to go underneath here. And realistically, if we're going now into the end of the year, let's just quickly have a look at a December. So 3.5% by December is the current expectation by the market but you'll see it's stabilized since we saw all of that craziness with the inflation number the other day where it went all the way up to 3.7 and now has dropped back. Some of that scared tactic by the market has dropped off and we would like to see this turn around, but the only way this is going to turn is if inflation actually starts to drop and then maybe the expectation of having to raise 100 basis points with 75 basis points past that for the Fed could stop there. Gold nothing going on with it in the middle of nowhere land very difficult here with gold if you're short congratulations if you're not short well yeah i think we have to wait for more information there are no big money flow buyers and of course we will be updating you should it come we won't waste any more time on that chart just for now though unfortunately it's just short until further notice let's move over to oil so oil dropped below kind of like the stock market did and then rallied straight back through and it actually created a bullish hammer off this level. So lots of trapping set in the last 24 hours in the markets. Basically the trap is that it goes underneath and then instantly bounces. Now we haven't got any follow through. So I think for oil traders, if you think, oh, this looks really bullish. Well, not necessarily. Take a look at this on the chart. See how we have probably some orders that are sitting here and here, and that's where the shorts have come in. You really want to breach that and then you still got problems with the 100 because there's orders there, no doubt. And then we probably would move forward. But oil is a very tough trade at the moment. Be a little bit careful around this level. I could see either side really playing out and therefore not much edge on this market. Maybe you disagree and you think you've got it. Good luck to you and I hope it works out. Let's move over to Tesla. Still stuck in the middle of range. It's kind of coiling up a little bit here. Some people are starting to draw, I'm sure, these types of... Uh, these types of patterns on Tesla saying, oh, I, could, I think it's moving into some kind of wedge or something like that. Um, look, I, I, I'm not sure if this is going to become like a pennant where we drop through, but certainly it is starting to, I guess, soften in terms of its ranges. If the stock market goes up, I would expect Tesla to come up with it. So Tesla traders, you're in the middle of nowhere land. And as you can see, the volume profile is right there. So this is the kind of equilibrium at the moment for this market. Move over to Europe to see if we can get any ideas what the European market's doing. It found support buyers. We broke through that low in the previous session we discussed in the previous video, straight down into here, and then we've rallied so far. For buyers to be really committed towards this trade, probably breaching through around 12,800 will be a big deal. Notice the volume profile sitting at 12,800, and that will point towards a breach of the downward trend with these series of lower highs and the ability for this market to go back up. For bears, you're just looking for a weekly close underneath here and then let the floodgates open of uh, lots of selling. Because I think if we get underneath this zone, there is a real chance that we sell off relatively heavily. And that's because 
take a look at these wicks in the past. The wick purchasing, the wick purchasing, currently the wick purchasing. Demand, if you snap it, where could we go? Maybe 11.5, maybe that's where the markets want to go. 3,500 on the S&P would be pretty normal for that as well. NASDAQ was stronger than the S&P 500 yesterday. It's, it's continued to hold up pretty nicely. So we see the defended zone here. Obviously, it didn't even make a new low. So while the stock market, the S&P 500 made a new low, the NASDAQ did not. So the NASDAQ managed to actually make a higher low and then it's breached back up. Any move through 12,000, I think is very strong here for the NASDAQ. What do you guys think in the comments? A move above here would be quite strong. We take out all of the selling orders. So all the supply that sits behind here and potentially allow ourselves to move back into some of these levels, maybe a 12,600, filling the gaps that were left previously on the markets. So if we go to the NDX and we load that up or NDQ, notice the gap that's still sitting here from that aggressive shorting action that we had previously. If the market does choose to rally, somewhere around here would be a very, very interesting level to see whether the bears get back in control. This could be like a squeeze. Also notice the real market, the lows were very similar. This is the real market versus the futures market. And we come into a resistance into Friday, like a double bottom, some people would say. So here is the market coming down, market going up, orders, market going down, filled the gap resistance 11 8 12 000. once you get past that we fill this gap i think that's probably assured at that point or at least it's a good technical kind of zone and then we move towards that 12 6. so these are the types of levels that we're certainly looking for in the markets right now s p 500 didn't quite fill but it got damn close by the end of the day 3800 plus would have filled the gap at this stage the rally was pretty significant and we opened up with the PPI an instant sell off in the hour of power, the first hour of uh, where retail traders have it. A lot of people went bearish, no doubt. It sucked them in and then it reversed. And this is often what happens. 3880 is, of course, where the bulls take full control of this market at this stage. That's a key level. Let's use the futures market to take a look at it together. So here we are. And if we get a close underneath this 3740 zone or this 20, I guess, with the low, that's going to point the bears saying, you know what, we've got full control of this market. Let's take this thing down. But at this stage, we were defended. Notice the switch that happened here. Really great trading if you took this. Actually, in the private community, we discussed this one. 3764, we had that ready. The market snaps it, comes back down, tweezer, long. Um, I wasn't awake for that session because I'm from Australia, but it was a nice trade and well done for anyone that got that. Remember, patience, react, don't predict. It's just not worth trying to take, you know, the snaps underneath of these key levels because if you do, then you get belted like this happened. If you wanted to take a short, the best way to do it, wait for the short to come through. If you want to scale into it, then you can only scale and then if it pulls back look for schematical changes and then if those things happen then you're giving yourself probably one of the better odds the conservative entries are often the best entries it's all about risk reward and ideally we want to risk as little as possible to make the best reward yeah that's what we all want to do let's move over here to the s p 500 options market and as you'll notice, Max Payne is sitting around 386, so a little bit higher than the current market. We're sitting around 30, 380 at the time of this recording. If the market can get up to this, well, it's achieved Max Payne, but realistically, there's still quite a lot of big puts that will most likely expire worthless. Check out those 370s, 150,000 units open still. And the big one this week has been the 380, which is 90 or 100,000 units. So very big options expiration here, as we saw huge amounts of money at stake. Will the market steal everyone's cash again, or is it gonna come back down and, and, and give, it, uh, give it to the bears? I would say at this stage, it looks like it wants to thieve from them. And then we'll find out with earnings next week what the next step is. Let's move over to Bitcoin. Bitcoin stuck in the middle of nowhere, basically still trapped inside the range. You'll notice the volume profile is right where it is right now. If the stock market recovers, probably expect Bitcoin to also recover with it, but we're not out of the woods here yet. It just looks like kind of the middling zone and not much more to say about that. 
For news that could be a catalyst, it's going to come down to retail sales. We have another big number. So we had the PPI, as you can see here, there's that in core inflation or core PPI a little bit lower, which is maybe good for the future, maybe about 1.1% on the main PPI. And then core retail sales, what will it be? Will it be expectation or will it be disappointment? The market can still move either way. It doesn't really matter what you think, I always say. It doesn't matter what I think either. The market's going to do what it's going to do. And the only thing you can really do is have the patience to react, not predict in these scenarios. How, ask, always ask yourself the question of when you've traded off the news, have you done better or worse statistically? There are ways to do it. It just takes absolute discipline and get it through. Thanks so much for watching. And of course, if you're interested, check out the links in the description down below for Tiger Brokers platform because they do have so many great features. We'll focus on a few more excellent features throughout earnings season. And I've also got a great layout that I wanna show you guys. So check out the links down below if you're looking at some of the special offers they have there. And remember to subscribe, smash that like button. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.